Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Anastasia Alexandrovich on behalf of uh, Press Club and Belarusian Focus. I would like to thank everyone who find in time to join us today. This is a press briefing with the representatives of the Viktor Babarikas team. We have a, a simultaneous interpretation available in English. You can select it using the globe. Sorry about that. We have a simultaneous interpretation available. You can select the English track or the Russian track. Also, we are broadcasting live on the, in the Press Club's YouTube channel today. We have with us here representatives of the Viktor Babarikas team, Maxim Bagritsov. Hello, Maxim. Hello. Also, uh, Viktor Laevsky is a former lawyer, defense lawyer of Viktor Babarika. And Gleb German, the press secretary of the Viktor Babarika's team. Colleagues will first have our speakers present their information. Then you can ask your questions in the chat or raise your hand and ask the questions using the voice. The floor is yours, Gleb. Hello, colleagues. Thank you for joining us uh, such short notice. Thank you very much for caring about Belarus. I am uh, very happy that we have Dmitry and Maxim joining us today. They'll be able to answer your questions. I would also like to thank Press Club for organizing this event. First and foremost, I would like to give floor to the first speaker, Dmitry Layevsky, who is an ex-defense lawyer of Mitni Babarika. Thank you very much, colleagues. I would like to thank all the journalists who uh, joined us today. I will briefly tell you why we're here today. The issue is that right now, Viktor Dmitrievich Babarika uh, is, cannot receive the legal assistance from his defense lawyers because they have uh, been actually disbarred and uh, and they're facing this part this moment and here i mean natalia matskevich and the yaugen pilchenka and there have been a dis disciplinary proceedings against them that was launched here's the situation there is a Belarusian legislation and the international law that guarantee the right to legal assistance among other things, this right includes the possibility of selecting your lawyer and possibility to receive assistance from the lawyer that people pick up. It also particularly relevant for the people who are criminally, have been criminally charged, like uh, Dmitry, Viktor Dmitrievich Babarika. Why uh, so much importance is attached to the defense lawyers and why the people that provide legal assistance are irreplaceable. I'm not going to even mention their uh, high professional skills, although this is a very important reason for them being irreplaceable, but I will focus on what many, what may th other people may think not as obvious. First, there's a trust. Uh, trust and relations between Viktor Babarika and his defense lawyers that he has selected, Natalia Matskevich and Yaugen Pilchenka. Uh, this kind of relationship doesn't happen overnight. They uh, need time to form, to happen. They have been forming for over 18 months since uh, my colleagues started helping legally Victor Babarika. Secondly, I don't know if you know, but not so long ago, um, uh, the sentence that put Victor Babarika into colony was appealed. And uh, during the uh, lawlessness times, there is a chance of 
the case being reviewed or some processes leading to that. It has to do with the fact that while preparing the uh, appeal, uh, we found some awful violations, and the, which means there's a chance that uh, we could succeed. Without a doubt, we need to do our best in this case. And if we remember that the criminal case uh, has about 120 volumes of literature and the case was heard for many months, it's obvious that the two defense lawyers um, that know the case inside out cannot be replaced at this moment of time, this point of time. Also, there's a so-called original case that uh, then turned and was transferred into the real case. This uh, like the original case exists and Eduardo Barica is still in custody as one of the uh, people charged in this case. So there could be a chance that the that Viktor Dmitrich Babarika will need his rights defended. Hence, the lawyers, his two lawyers, are irreplaceable once again. So I just wanted to focus on the fact that um, the problem is that, that Babarika can not, can no longer use the assistance of the people he selected. What happened? How did this happen? On the 12th of October, and on the 20th of October, by the orders of the Minister of Justice, uh, the disciplinary proceedings against uh, the lawyers Matskevich and Pichenka were instituted. At the same time, with the, these proceedings, before the results of any investigations, both lawyers uh, were actually suspended. And the reasons for that, for disciplinary proceedings, are absolutely ridiculous. For example, um, Matskevich is charged with formulating the questions in the wrong way or something like that. Too far-fetched. And uh, therefore, there's no reason to discuss discuss them because we might as well uh, take any phrase of oh, that they ever uttered out of the context. But I want to uh, focus several facts that speak for themselves and that this persecution of the lawyers is artificial, is aimed at harming the rights and the Victor Babarika. What I mean here is that because we remember the right to the legal assistance is a constitutional one. You and me and any of us, including Victor Babarika, has this right, which is guaranteed by the constitution. And for the, as a constitutional right, it is a bit much higher than the, any order ordinance of, issued by the Minister of Justice. So the question remains, all of a sudden, the state body stopped the possibility of Viktor Babarika to implement his constitutional rights. Secondly, it happened right after the uh, defense appealed the sentence of Viktor Babarika. In other words, it made a very important step in protecting his interests. Uh, it was followed by the reaction from the authorities. It happened to, I mean, the disciplinary proceedings happened uh, with uh, two lawyers due to the, some bureaucratic issues. There was uh, some uh, like a break, a week's break, but this happened absolutely unexpectedly. The, uh, and the lawyers didn't have time even to meet with Mr. Barika to, and to announce this to him, I mean, tell him about this. It also happened without any uh, investigation without any proceedings. There were no proceedings 
at all. And the minister ordered, made an order and the, the defense lawyers were informed that they cannot, can no longer provide any legal assistance to Victor Babarika in particular. Hence, we may conclude that this, these procedures uh, have to do with uh, Victor Babarika. And it was him who, whose rights were violated. Talking about the scale of this problem, I must also mention two points here. First is that the number of defense lawyers that Dr. Bogarika selected or that have uh, lost their license or have been suspended or risking losing their license. I mean, Vladimir Pulchenko was uh, uh, actually, his uh, license was revoked. Then I was, my license was revoked. And now this, these two uh, defense lawyers, Matskevich and Pulchenko are facing the same risk. So basically this, we've never seen anything like this in any case. And uh, I cannot connect it with anything else rather than the uh, Victor Babarika and his uh, persona. And we need help, Victor Babarika needs help. And today, there are only two groups of people who can somehow affect the situation, influence it from the point of view of defending the rights, protecting the rights of Victor Barica. First, it's the uh, disciplinary commission of the Minsk City Bar Association that will consider uh, the disciplinary proceedings. And then they will be reviewed and considered in the next couple of days. So this commission may protect the Barbarica's lawyers from these far-fetched proceedings and uh, and protect the right of Victor Babarika and protect his rights. And the second problem, second issue is that we it is critical today if two more defense lawyers of Babarika uh, have their licenses revoked, you can imagine what a return it would be for all the lawyers who remain and work not in this case, but in other cases. So it would be a sign that the Minister of Justice can, at any point of time, uh, just suspend any lawyer and the client will remain without the last legal instrument of uh, protection. That's what I wanted to tell you. Thank you very much, Dmitry. I just wanted to give floor to Maxim Gritsov, representative of the Victor Babarika's team and the party together. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. I will be brief because I think Dmitry uh, basically described the, the reason why we're here why we're doing this, even though this is not the, f the first example when in Belarus, the basic uh, rights are ignored. I mean, basic human rights are ignored and basic human rights of political prisoners are ignored. We're doing this because, because we believe that uh, it's getting worse. We, we know what we think about the criminal proceedings in his case and about uh, uh, his charges. Uh, we don't believe there is any uh, reasonable uh, proof in the case. And we believe there will be a hate regime uh, towards uh, Victor and uh, towards his lawyers who did his, their job by protecting Victor Barica in court. We think that it's important to draw attention to this fact. It's very important to try to defend the basic rights and not just close an eyes to that. 
there is always hope that this is a joint legal system. In this legal system, you never know who will need the protection and defense of the lawyers. Because Babarika being probably the most publicly known uh, criminal, I mean, the, uh, is uh, probably an example for everyone in the case that if this is happening to him, then it will happen uh, to other people who may need legal protection. It's very important because uh, everyone is affected by that, including people who are in the power. Hello, thank you. And uh, now we'll try to answer the questions that we received in advance. Uh, then feel free to raise your hand and you will be able to an an ask a question here. The first question is quite big from the issue. It's probably uh, for Mitilevsky. What do regular lawyers think of that? Are there any, uh, what were the ways of protecting against the system? Do they have, how can a lawyers from other organizations in other countries help in this case? There is a big question. I think that uh, while in the 2020, there were people in the Bar Association and, the, and the lawyers who shared our values, the majority of them are still working. I just believe that the people Uh, uh, in the, uh, in, the, in other words, frozen. I mean, the, because the conditions, work conditions in 2020 and now they're different. But then there were also high risks of expressing your opinions. But there was a feeling that there's a it possible to start a transformation in society. Now we don't have this feeling. I mean, in the short term. The Ministry of Justice has unlimited powers, and uh, by using these powers, due to it using its powers, we are here today and holding this conference. All the lawyers, who, and I'm uh, confident that the Natalia Matskevich and Yao Pilchenka are well known among their colleagues, and many of the colleagues would support them. But I believe that there's a feeling that the situation is very fragile. At least the, the, some lawyers think this way. Or they want to do their best uh, for their clients and not run any risk. Because as soon as you start expressing your opinion, you either get reprimanded or uh, disciplinary proceedings are started against you and then you may get your license revoked. So they either want to help their current clients who just like Babarika may be left without lawyers, without legal defense, or some of them are just trying to continue their work, receive the pay for the work they do and not risk anything for people like that as well. Although it doesn't mean that they do not support inside of them the, the values and the freedom of the prof profession and the corporate standards. It's just in the legal democratic society and state, if there were no risks for them, they would you know, sign some documents and uh, express the opinion. But today we live in a different world. And today's event is something that could affect the uh, lawyer's position, lawyer's views, because if lawyers see that the, the society is reacting to what is happening, they may become more active themselves because honestly, 
in, in the summer of 2020, I had a feeling that everyone was for us, was supporting us. And, uh, and the lawyers were all very ag agitated, but very active with them. It's more difficult now. We shouldn't expect everyone to, you know, to play victim, just like we shouldn't expect it from all the citizens of Belarus. What can international lawyers and foreign lawyers help? First, many people who work as defense lawyers in Belarus need more clients, need financial support. I need information support. The issue that we're discussing today became uh, widely discussed. I think it could affect the, the disciplinary commission of the Minsk City Bar Association. I don't think there are any, uh, any other uh, instruments because for the lawyers to be effective in their work, uh, the desire is not enough. The proper conditions are very important. And the conditions are created by the state agencies, and you can see what kind of conditions they are. Thank you. The next question for Maxim Bagritov. Maxim, you can constantly in contact with the international community. What do they know? What do they think about what is happening in Belarus? And uh, particularly the issue of Victor Babarika. I know that uh, everyone who is dealing with the human rights know very well about what is happening. Because this is the fundamental level of rights that uh, cannot go unnoticed for by any legal human rights protection organization. Everyone understands that Belarus cannot be on top of a media agenda. I think uh, it's not uh, Viktor Babarika who is doing that, but Alexander Lukashenko is doing that better than all of us combined. Hence, we get attention and uh, I think it will happen this way until there will be uh, the situation will be normalized. Will normalize since we're the country in the middle of Europe, and uh, uh, the fact that uh, basic rights are violated uh, actually is of interest of many people around and under many countries surrounding us. Um, what is, has been happening in the last couple of d weeks and days in terms of the um, mask regime and everything uh, very much reminds other people a zoo. So, hence additional interest. Thank you very much. Now the question about Viktor Babarika. It will be a question to Mitri Layevsky. What are the latest news about him? What are the any, any news about the conditions of his work. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have the latest news because uh, in the last week, his lawyers could not uh, get access to him because they have been actually suspended. That's what we're discussing today. But if we uh, consider what happened uh, a week ago, I could, would see that there is an issue uh, linked to the communication of Viktor Babarika with his uh, relatives started uh, getting shaped. Several phone calls were planned for, for them to talk. As you probably know, they are allowed to uh, have a phone conversation over a regular phone or a Skype. Those phone calls did not happen. I don't know why we're trying to find the reason for that, but I know for sure that the people who uh, whom he was supposed to call are still waiting for his calls. I don't know if, he, if this happened uh, 
for a reason or not. We'll find out very soon. There's a problem also with letters. He does receive letters, but unfortunately, he receives them several times a month. And I don't think that it's uh, in line with the legislation, but he does receive letters, which is good. As to, the, as to his working conditions, that was the problem connected with the high uh, temperature in the bakery where he was working after his defense lawyers. Uh, raised this issue, the, a special commission came that uh, tried to see for itself the conditions. And I think now we have the response and reply from the that enterprise saying that the, all the conditions are in line with legislation. But again, due uh, to his uh, two lawyers being suspended, we don't know what activities were done and uh, whether the uh, conditions are really in line with the legislation. As to his living conditions, in his room, where he's staying during his not working hours, it is a regular one, just like all other prisoners. So nothing special there. Thank you very much. I would like to remind you, colleagues, that you're free to ask your questions in the chat. I would like to give give flown out to Anastasia. There are some interesting questions from YouTube. Thank you, Gleb. I think it's a question to Dmitry. Well, is it possible to organize the meetings with uh, Viktor Babarika, not with, through his defense lawyers, but also but, uh, through some diplomats or UN representatives. Well, actually, I don't know who, of course, if such an initiative is launched uh, and is, um, by the diplomatic corps, uh, we will only welcome it. I think this issue is solvable legally, but I don't know if, if it will be allowed by the authorities. I cannot uh, forecast anything since uh, his lawyers are getting suspended. I don't think, well, I don't know if um, a meeting with a diplomat with diplomats will be allowed, but we are all, we are all for it. I just wanted to add, it's uh, very much similar to the question asked at the beginning of today's meeting, how much attention is now paid uh, by the international community to Belarus. It's easy to show using the example of Viktor Babarika. We're basically shown to the whole world what is happening in Belarus, because the oldest regimes with the worst conditions imaginable in, in the area of human rights violation, there is still access to political prisoners or other prisoners. I mean, for the international organizations in Belarus, this is almost impossible. And if this is a signal for everyone else that this in fact is bringing us closer. So the Stalin's regime Stalin's approaches where there is no access to the prisoners. The, we have a prosecutor and we don't have a true lawyer. The lawyer that you're offered by the state is uh, like another prosecutor. And the lack of access to the prisoners for the international organizations is another drop to our negative image. Thank you. Thank you, Maxim. Question to Dmitry again. Oh, the decision of the Minsk City Bar Association, can it be appealed if it's not in favor of the Babarika's lawyers? 
yes, the decision can be appealed by, but this appeal, particularly in the conditions when the state is uh, not particularly democratic and uh, is not a law abiding, this appeal may not be effective. But the decision of the disciplinary commission of the Minsk City Bar Association can be uh, appealed at the high level, at the national level. But you should understand that this uh, commission meets at the building of the Ministry of Justice, which launched uh, the disciplinary proceedings. And also this commission includes the heads of the legal consultancy bodies that are managed by the Ministry of Justice. So I uh, I don't hope for the effective defense here. If uh, the order of the Ministry of Justice is approved by the Minsk City Bar Association. So uh, we don't expect it to be a way out of this situation, particularly since the decision of the Minsk City Bar Association is uh, immediate. And the lawyer loses the, the possibility to practice law. And uh, Babarika loses the possibilities to use the services of uh, his lawyers. Currently, it's uh, reversible if the disciplinary commission listens to us and what we're trying to tell them. But if the disciplinary commission approves uh, what the Ministry of Justice wants, then it's over. I would like to thank our speakers and colleagues. I don't see any more questions at the moment. Please raise your hand. Maxim Dmitri, if you want to add something, you're welcome to do that. I just wanted to say that I just want to add one thing. Maxim Bogatsov said the right thing that uh, today it's not only about the uh, support for Viktor Babarika, it's a litmus test for what will happen to everyone else in Belarus, because this will be the algorithm. This, this is actually the algorithm that was used uh, in order to put pressure on the Belarusian lawyers. The first, what they do is just cross the red line a little bit, and then they make several steps in that direction. If we allow it, allow it, they will do this. So it's very important to join our efforts to resist them and to do it now and not when it's all over. Thank you very much for joining us today. There's a small remark in the chat. Do I understand it right that uh, Victor Bavarica doesn't have any defense lawyers or there are some lawyers who could, could visit him? No, currently he doesn't have anyone protecting his interests. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you for your time. We've been discussing this issue for about 50 minutes. We'll be happy to inform you uh, about the next step. Thank you, Press Club. Thank you for organizing this meeting. Thank you, Gleb. Thank you, colleagues. Please uh, follow our reviews and follow our update about the conferences in the future. Thank you very much.